Yeah, see, ladies and gentlemen, it makes a difference. The only time I really appreciated having money was when my mother became ill. My brother called me and said, Leslie, yes, mama's been sick and we're going to put her in a nursing home. Wesley, we can't do that. Get Margaret Ann on the phone. She's on the phone. Get Linda and Leonard. They're all here, What, Leslie. Mama used to work in a nursing home. She said she never wanted to go into one. I promised her when I was 10 that I would take care of her. He said, we knew you would feel like that. And this is why we did such a thorough job interviewing the various nursing homes. And we have found the one that's ideal. I said, hold it, hold it just a minute. She took care of us. See, I had a problem. I couldn't understand how one woman, 46, domestic worker on Miami Beach, can raise seven children who couldn't take care of themselves, but seven children couldn't take care of one woman. I had a problem with that. So I resigned from the Ohio legislature and I went back to Miami to take care of mama. And I'll never forget taking her to Jackson Memorial Hospital. The receptionist said, as she looked at my mother looked at me, she didn't say, how are you doing? Are you uncomfortable? Are you in any pain? The lady just said, what kind of insurance do you have? And I stepped forward and I said, she has Les Brown Unlimited. Give my mother what she needs. I can write a check for it. My best friend Lonnie Cotton wrote on the paper at 10, he wanted to be a doctor. This was an impossibility. Lonnie can't even read. When we in the reading group, he started a fight so he can get thrown out to the principal's office. What doctor you know can't read? I knew Lonnie wasn't going to be no doctor when he said that. I knew he was just writing stuff on the paper. What you want to write on your paper is what you gifted at. What are you gifted at? What is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort? That's your gift. God has been using your imagination to show you your gift. Something new is coming. It's easy to get stuck in life. When we've gone through disappointments, had a setback, tried and our dream didn't work out, we can settle where we are and think this is as good as it gets. But God said in Isaiah, I am doing a new thing. Even now it springs forth. Can you not perceive it? God is about to do something new in your life. He didn't create you to get stuck at one level and stay there. He has new opportunities, new relationships, new favor. It may look like you'll always struggle in your finances. So get ready, something new is coming. Promotion, opportunity, doors opening that you never dreamed would open. The medical report says you have to live with that sickness. It's been a long time. God is saying, I'm doing a new thing. I'm restoring health. I'm breathing energy, vitality, freshness into your body. That child has been off course for years. You've accepted that he'll never change. That would be true, but God is doing a new thing. Forces of darkness are being broken. Purpose and destiny are rising up. You're about to see a turnaround. Or maybe that addiction has hindered you your whole life. You tried to stop, gone to counseling, nothing helped. This is a new day. Chains that have held you back are being loosed. What's kept you in captivity is coming to an end. Now you have to do your part and receive the prophecy. You can't go around thinking you're stuck. The problem's too big. It's been this way too long. Turn it around. Lord, I believe what you promised. Thank you that you're doing something new in my life. When Isaiah prophesied this, the Israelites were in captivity in Babylon. They had been there a long time, year after year, nothing changing. I'm sure they thought, we'll always struggle. We'll always be oppressed. Then Isaiah showed up and said, get ready. God is doing a new thing. They could have thought, yeah, right. Have you seen these enemies? Look how powerful they are. All the circumstances say we're stuck. We'll never live an abundant life. Never own our own homes. Our children will never be free. Don't talk yourself out of the new thing God wants to do. The odds may be against you, but the Most High God is for you. The Israelites had been through many struggles, had unfair things happen. They had made mistakes, brought the trouble on themselves. They could have been sitting in self-pity, discouraged. But Isaiah said, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Behold, God is doing a new thing. The principle is, if you're dwelling on the past, you won't see the new thing. If you're focused on who hurt you, what wasn't fair, why did this friend walk away, then you'll miss your destiny. God is saying, forget the former things. 
Quit dwelling on your mistakes. This is a new day. Living in regrets will keep you from new opportunities. Reliving your mistakes will stop the new favor. As long as you're looking back at the old, you won't see the new. When you drive home today, there's a big windshield in front of you and a very small rear view mirror. The reason it's so small is because what's behind you is not nearly as important as what's in front of you. Where you're going is what matters, not where you've been. Is there something you need to forget so you can see the new thing? Something you need to quit dwelling on so you can step into the favor and abundance that God has for you? When someone hurts you, they do you wrong. If you keep thinking about it, then you're letting them continue to hurt you. Don't give them your power. You have to let it go. Give it to God. He saw what they did. He saw your tears, your heartache. He has beauty for those ashes. But here's the key. You have to let go of the ashes before you can see the beauty. It's an exchange. God says, you give me the ashes. You quit dwelling on the hurts. You forgive them. You move forward with your life and I'll give you the beauty. I'll do something so great, so rewarding that you don't even think about what you lost. The new thing God has for you the new people, the new opportunities, the promotion, healing, influence will be better than you ever dreamed. The Israelites were in captivity. Not only were the Babylonians holding them, but all around them was the desert. Even if they escaped, they couldn't survive. But Isaiah explained what the new thing was. He said, God will make rivers in the desert. What looks like barren ground will be turned into fertile land. God was saying, this new thing that I'm about to do, it's not going to be natural. It's going to be supernatural. That's why you can't figure it out. It's not going to be logical. What God is about to do is going to be unusual, uncommon, out of the ordinary. You're going to see rivers where there should be dry places. The scripture says, even in famine, the righteous will have more than enough. Seems like in famine, you would barely get by. But God does things that defies the odds. Don't limit this new thing to what you think can happen. If I can just learn to live with this sickness, no, God is going to free you from the sickness. If I can just pay my bills, Joe, I'll be happy. God's going to bring you into overflow. If my child will just stay out of trouble, that child is going to do great things. You may not see how. That's okay. It's not up to you. It's up to God. He's the one that makes rivers in the desert. He's the one that parts Red Seas, cures the lepers, multiplies the food to feed thousands. A lady told me how her relative had passed away and left her a small inheritance. She decided to invest it in real estate. She bought another house and was going to rent it out. The first people that came along seemed like fine people. They worked for a nonprofit that helped children. She thought this couple would be perfect. She didn't do all the background checks that she should have. And turned out they were dishonest. Three months into the lease, they stopped paying rent and didn't tell her. She had it set up to go to the bank. She thought everything was fine. They kept her from getting the notices. Well, several years went by and eventually the house was foreclosed on. She lost all of her money. She could have been bitter, upset, tried to get revenge, but she said, I didn't make a big deal about it. That takes maturity. It's easy to make a big deal when we're hurt, betrayed. Why did this happen? I'm going to get even. You have to forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. That means don't let the hurts, the bad breaks, the times you were taken advantage of sour the rest of your life, cause you to live with a chip on your shoulder. God knows how to vindicate you. He knows how to pay you back. Year after year, she kept being her best. Nobody even knew she went through the bad break. She didn't go around complaining, discouraged. She had a song of praise. God sees when you're in the desert. He's watching you in the lonely nights, the times you were betrayed. You felt like giving up, but you kept going. You could have held a grudge, but you forgave. You kept moving forward. It wasn't easy. You were hurting. The pain was real, but you didn't let it stop you. Six years later, this lady got a check in the mail unexpectedly from the bank for $125,000. They said, we sold the property and this money belongs to you. She didn't even pay that much for it. She made a profit. God knows how to make rivers in the desert. He knows how to pay you back for the wrongs.